In June 2014, the young doctor was arrested and charged with bludgeoning her husband to death. She was found not guilty of murder, but sentenced to four years for manslaughter, eligible for parole after two. Chamari Lianagay served her time and has now been released. Tonight, for the first time, she tells her story to 7.30's Lauren Day. So what do you remember from that night back in June 2014? I remember the night before. Didn't ask me to go to sleep, so I closed my laptop and I went to sleep. <laughs> and then when I wake up, <laughs> I really didn't know what happened that day. And still I don't remember what happened. What happened was Chamari Lianagay bludgeoned her husband Denendra Athukarala to death with a mallet. I could not believe it happened. And it took me about a month. I was in shock to comprehend what must have happened. When she first met fellow doctor Denendra Athukarala in Sri Lanka in 2009, he initially seemed charming. He was a very kind, lovely, and very generous person. And yeah, we just, I, I thought I was falling in love with him. After a whirlwind romance, they were married and soon emigrated to Australia, eventually working together at the same hospital in Geraldton. But soon after they arrived in Australia, Chamari Lianagay says the man she loved and trusted turned violent, beating her with a wooden rolling pin and a metal chair. He also forced her to perform sex acts for strangers on Skype in exchange for child porn. There was quite significant violence. Emotional, physical, <laughs> psychological. Sexual, financial, <laughs> and <laughs> he also monitored her every move. I think emotional abuse was the most difficult part to deal with because that constant manipulation, constant control, which I felt I was so much trapped and I could not leave, and constant threats to myself and my family and loved ones, it make me very helpless. There'll be some people who would say, you could have just left, you didn't have to kill your husband. Why didn't you just leave? It is a very complex issue. I tried six times and I failed all those times because of that manipulation, control, didn't have the power to control me. So every time I tried to leave or I left, he would threaten me, he would send that the control he had, I had to go back to him. Chamari Lianagay called Triple O at 6.30 a.m. on the 24th of June, 2014. Police officers arrived to find her huddled by the couch in a distressed state. Two days after Denendra Athukarala's death, Chamari Lianagay was charged with his murder. When you found out what you'd done, were you shocked? I mean, did you think you were capable of something like that? I cannot imagine because <laughs> Din is my one and only partner. I loved him so much and one reason I kept going was I thought he would change one day to that gentle loving person whom I met five and a half years ago. I've seen the good side of him, I've seen the wonderful side of him and I thought he would change 
if I did, if I follow his orders, if I try to make him happy. After a three-week trial which heard evidence of the extensive domestic violence she'd endured, Chamari Lianagay was found not guilty of murder, but convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to four years in prison, backdated to the night of her husband's death. When I go to prison, it was a safe heaven. I found my own peace in my mind, yeah, and in my heart. It let me understand who I am and it let me explore myself and be myself. It was there she learned to paint. It's like meditation. It helps me to concentrate. It helps me to kind of liberate myself. And those emotions which has been hidden inside me for so long, to get them out in an easier way. She also began to write about her experiences, including the darkest days of her marriage when she considered taking her own life. I was standing on the last stone, looking down to the vast ocean, which was about to deliver my eternal peace. Reading that back and remembering a time when you felt like killing yourself was the only option, what do you think now? It was a very difficult time. And at that time, I thought that would be the best option available. <laughs> only way I can escape. That must have taken a lot of strength to get from there to here. I have to admit, it was difficult, extremely difficult. But now, if I can help at least one more person to change their lives, who's experienced the similar things, who's going through the same similar situations, I would be very glad. While behind bars, her friends stood by Dr Liana Gay, campaigning to allow her to stay in Australia after her visa was cancelled. In January, the Immigration Minister revoked his decision, which would have seen her deported to an uncertain future in Sri Lanka. That's part of the reason she decided to tell her story. I wanted to thank all the Australian community who has been there with me all throughout these very difficult times, continuously supporting me. I want to say sorry for Dean's family, for what they has to go through, and wanted to express my sincere sympathies to everyone who's been affected. Chamari Lianagay's newfound freedom comes with a long to-do list. She's trying to get her medical licence back, find somewhere to live and help others who feel trapped in abusive relationships. But first, she's enjoying the simple things which, just a week ago, seemed unimaginable. After feeling so trapped in that abusive relationship for so long and then spending two and a half years in prison, what does freedom feel like to you now? Be able to make my own choices be able to be myself again without having to think twice about it and even to make little choices like buying my groceries without feeling afraid whether I will be criticized about it whether I'll be blamed about my choices that is a great feeling to be able to be myself back again And anyone dealing with domestic violence issues can get help by calling 1800 RESPECT or 1800 737 732.